This is the sump construction as it is at the moment. What I'll do is I'll give you a quick um, talk through of how I actually um, how I envisage this working, uh, and then I'll show you a few videos of me actually putting it together um, to show you how I made it. Basically, the way that this works is the uh, there's three main compartments within here. Uh, this first compartment here is where the uh, water will go in from the tank. Um, the heater will be in here as well. I'm going to silicone a clip into the side there. Um, also, there's the protein skimmer in here as well, which is a Tonzi 9002, um, which actually clamps onto the back there via a magnet, so that's not going anywhere. There's also a T-connector here from the main pump, so there's water also going in here as well from that, so that it should be quite turbulent in there. You can't see it because the protein skimmer is in the way, but basically on the side of this panel just here, you can see a series of holes. So that is where the water will flow through from this compartment into this one, which is going to be a refugium. This is one of those um, uh, arc pods, I basically just sprayed the top of it black, um, just so it matches everything else. Um, and it's, it's on a hinge there, so basically that's where uh, the deep sand bed will go, about four inches or so. Uh, um, and then finally, there's a um, uh, the water will come out of here into this compartment via this um, uh, overflow comb, which is actually adjustable up and down by about a centimetre or so when it comes out altogether. But basically, the water will then flow over into this compartment here which has got some egg crate on the bottom so basically in that compartment I can put um, uh, um, media bags with things like um, activated carbon and um, row of foss in there and then that then flows through into this final compartment just here and of course this is the one where the water level will go up and down through evaporation loss and it's where the main pump is, the main pump being adjustable and also again even more adjustable because I've got an adjustable T-connector here that spits some of the water back into there so the idea will be that there will be a certain amount of water that will be going around in here in a clockwise direction and then of course this connector here is what will then go back up to the main tank to return the water back up to the main display tank. So what I'll do now is I'll show you the videos that I created of um, it in its various stages so you can see how it got from the um, 12 inch box that it was into what it is now. Okay, so the first problem that I had when I bought the aquarium was the size of the sump. It only has a footprint of 12 by 12 inches, um, which wasn't really much good for what I wanted to do. I actually wanted the three compartments within it, um, with the uh, you know the, the three traditional compartments you have with the water going from. Uh, left to right with a skimmer chamber, a refugium in the middle and then finally a return section which is not something you could do with a square footprint or so I thought. So what I did was I opened up Microsoft Word on the computer and started producing um, a few kind of scale drawing ideas as a plan um, from the top of the sump to try and see whether I could still get the three compartments within it um, which I on paper seem to manage to do. Um, instead of making the water flow from left to right, I just made it go clockwise. So I opened up Microsoft Word and using auto shapes um, produced um, a few scale drawings, plan views, um, like this one here, which is the, the, the final one, just transposing inches in reality for centimeters to, to, to get it to fit on an A4 sheet of paper. This is the sump that came with the aquarium. Um, it's got a footprint of 12 by 12 inches. I have painted the outside of the um, uh, three walls at the back here with um, a black gloss paint, uh, making sure that I have masked off and left a gap where the silicone is because I don't know what effect the paint will have on the silicone. On the inside, obviously that's left, that's left a gap out here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some aquarium um, grade black silicone um, in those back corners there to add additional strength. Also, what I've got here is a stick of post-it on the outside of the tank. When um, I was running the, um, uh, the wet testing, um, just to kind of see how the water flowed through it all, um, I stuck a post-it on the outside here with a mark where the water level was when the aquarium was running. When I cut the power, um, I made a note of how far up the water came um, uh, from the backwash from the tank, um, so I know how high up the water will come. Uh, if ever there's a power cut or if ever I switch the pump off while I'm doing a water change, that means that I know how high I can actually have the water level in the tank. Um, and also it means that I know 
um, whereabouts I can put the petitions and, and, and what size those petitions um, will end up being. So I'm starting to cut the acrylic sheet and one of the problems that I found was actually trying to saw a straight line because I don't have a band saw. Um, when I first started um, sawing the acrylic I was using one of these things and the line was going all over the place. I was having great difficulty trying to trying to keep the line straight. So um, I've gone for one of these instead, um, which I didn't think I'd be able to use, but actually the teeth are quite fine on it and so it's actually cut through the acrylic quite well. Also what it means is because it's got such a long blade um, when I'm uh, sawing down the line if I if I look above then it means that I'm actually I can actually see that I'm keeping quite a straight line there and actually using the um, uh, the length of the blade there just to try and keep the line straight. That's the first two pieces of acrylic cut. Um, I've left the film on them still just to um, uh, just to save getting them scratched but uh, one of the things that I've done here is uh, for the base of the um, the black one here is I've actually just rounded the edges off because of course inside the sump there's um, the uh, um, sealant that, that runs down the bottom there. That's the two primary pieces of acrylic in there, they're not glued in yet, I'm just holding them basically together in there with um, pieces of blue tap but it gives you an idea of the uh, the three compartments and how they um, um, how they'll look size wise obviously this isn't actually white it's got the film still on it so um, when that's peeled off you'll be able to see straight through that because it's uh, completely clear acrylic that part is this is what I've done to the black sheet that I've cut um, I've taken out a, um, a square section here and fitted one of these um, two part um, aquamedic um, overflow combs and just cut it to size and, and, and glued that in there um, and also what I've done is here I've um, uh, rather than cutting a section out and putting a grill in, I've actually just drilled it with uh, lots of different holes. And this is what I've done with the clear sheet. Uh, all I've needed to do there is just take out a semicircle, which I've done with um, with one of these drill bits. Now the film is still on here. I've actually left the film on purposefully to um, to protect the acrylic sheet. And also what I've done is I've stuck on pieces of. Um, uh, masking tape there so I can actually draw on it quite easily so all I need to do now is basically just pull away the um, pull away the film um, and begin gluing the pieces together and there they are that's the two pieces um, they've actually turned out quite well I don't, don't seem to be any um, any scratches or anything on there at all so I've glued those two pieces together which has created a t-shape as you can see and when that goes into the sump, like so, that then creates the three compartments there, the first, second and third. So what I've done now is I've added this third final piece just here with um, a piece of egg crate at the bottom. Please forgive the sticky tape, um, but basically the general idea is that this um, then slots into here, something like so. So the three main pieces of equipment that I have so far in the sump is uh, one of the Tunzi 9002 protein skimmers. The reason I chose it is because it's uh, it's quite a slim uh, protein skimmer, um, uh, perfectly rated for the size aquarium that I've got. Um, the Tunzi Silence um, from a previous video which um, I tested sound-wise to, to try and pick something that would be quiet. And the um, Refugium light is one of these um, Arcadia Arc Pods, all I did was I just sprayed the top black rather than it being silver. So basically that's how I got it to the stage that it's at now. Um, a couple of other things that I'm going to want to add to it at some point um, fairly soon. One of them is an auto top off device which will um, sit in um, this final chamber just here. Um, one of the other things that um, that I'm quite pleased with is there's actually still some room for future expansion. Um, down here at the bottom there's this kind of area here that's not doing anything. Um, a small pump could go there which would be able to power something like a uh, phosphate reactor or something like that if I wanted at some future point. So if I decide that I'm wanting to add anything extra to it then um, I've still got the capacity to be able to do that even though it is a very small sump. So generally I'm quite pleased with it. Um, I'm quite pleased with um, how much I've managed to squeeze into it, how it will work in reality of course, um, I don't know just yet, but um, as far as the build process has gone, I'm, um, I'm quite pleased with it.